Someone asked me once, why vintage? Why use vintage ephemera and papers? What's the appeal? That's what I'm talking about in today's video. So using vintage papers and ephemera in collage is a personal preference of mine. It's not so easy to describe or explain the reasons why I'm drawn to it. I know that I have always had a love of history. These are two of my beloved books as a teenager. I wrote my name and date inside. The date is 1990, which would have made me about 16 years old. And that's definitely the time when I realized that I really did have an interest in history. But is it just a love of history that draws me to work with vintage? I think it's something more. I think it's history and imagination. In my thoughts, we are all living on a plane of existence, our plane right now. Things are happening to us at the moment. We're on this plane of existence and the idea of being able to bring someone or something back to this plane whose time has already passed, that is really fascinating to me. So it's one thing to study or to learn about something that happened in the past, but it's something else to be able to touch an object that was made by a person or people that had a specific purpose in the past. To me, it's like connecting with history. But there are lots of antiques and lots of old things, and not everything that is old connects with you. There are some things that engage your imagination more intensely. And here are some examples that I have. So when I was about 19, I went to the UK and I was walking, looking at all these shops and there was a coin shop. I don't know why I was interested in going into the coin shop, maybe because I already had an interest in history and I wanted to see the coins inside. But I went in and there was a dealer who was selling all kinds of coins, including Roman bronze coins. So the Romans were in the UK or were in England from 43 AD until 410 AD. So that was a very, very long time ago. And when I saw this coin for a pound 75, honestly, I was surprised at how cheap it was, being how old, how many years it is. And I even asked the, the person, I said, is this a real coin? And he was very annoyed. <laughs> he was annoyed and he said, of course it's real. Um, but to me, it just seemed like the price was so incredibly low for something that is so incredibly old, right? So here is my bronze coin and I just, I had to get it. I'm going to take it out because I want to hold it in my hand. It doesn't look like much, um, but when you start to look at it very closely, you can see that there is a head of an emperor, for example. Just the ability to hold in my hand something like this is amazing. This is history and it's something that thousands upon thousands of people possibly also touch this coin at some point. So that's why this one is fascinating to me. Here's another example. So in where I live in the San Francisco Bay Area, there is a lace museum. And in this lace museum, they sell all kinds of remnants of pieces of lace. Some lace is um, machine made and some lace is made by hand. These are just some examples of machine made lace. But then you have pieces like this that were made by hand and 
you know, you can see the irregularities in, in the, you know, in the, in the circumference, the way the hand stitches. This was held in somebody's hand for a long time while they were doing this, right? So it's just an amazing thing that something from so long ago can still be around today. So I was at the shop. Oh, I have one more piece to show you. This one. This is Armenian knotted lace. Look how pretty that is. So pretty. So I was at the shop buying some of these little pieces of lace and at the register there was um, a bowl right by the, the, the cash register and in the bowl were these little pieces of remnants. These are France 1760 pure silk court dress fragments. One dollar a piece. So I splurged and I bought two of them. So how cool is it to be able to touch a piece of court dress, French silk court dress from the 1760s? So these court dress remnants, they pull history, they pull time, they pull the person who wore this dress all onto my timeline into present day, which is crazy. That's crazy. This is why I love to use vintage things. And this is why I love to use originals and not just copies of originals. And I understand that not everybody has the ability to get a hold of originals or would even have the interest in using originals and would rather play with copies, that's totally fine too. It's, it's the idea of having your imagination engaged with knowledge and awareness of the past. In my imagination, something happens with time and space. The past and the present intersect. And this blows my mind. So another example of vintage papers that connect the past to the present are postcards. I love postcards. Let me share some with you. So one of the cool things about postcards is that oftentimes they have uh, a date stamped on it. This is June 1896 going to San Francisco and it's from W.B. Gray from Lompoc, California. And this is his report of the fruit crop, right? And now this is so neat because, okay, there's also, there's all this information about different kinds of crops, but it says late frost injured all kinds of fruit, right? It's just so neat to see something that specifically happened at a specific time. Even if you don't understand the language, like this vintage postcard that is from Japan, the fact that you have something that is written by somebody's hand, right, handwriting, obviously this was in the person's hand who wrote this card, right? Just, just from the proof of having their handwriting on it. And it was in the hand of the person who received the card. So that is just such a personal thing that, you know, belonged to somebody else. Here I have this series of postcards. These are French postcards. Um, Paris, Hotel de Ville, Paris. I don't know if that's the scene, but oh, look, this is a, the police precinct, um, right? And what's interesting about these postcards is that the writing is all in shorthand, Greg shorthand. And this is, these are so fascinating because you don't know what was written on these. And, you know, it could be some secret message. Um, they're all written, all addressed to the same person. Obviously, they're just so fascinating 
to, to look at and to imagine what they could possibly be. So I don't have a deep connection to all of the vintage paper and vintage ephemera that I have, but I do very much enjoy creating something new out of something that is old and bringing these things to the attention of new people who have not seen it before. I enjoy showcasing the specialness of these vintage papers so that others can see and experience it. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and let me know in the comments if you enjoy working with vintage papers and vintage ephemera and why is it that it connects with you. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you the next time.